early morning at Chester Zoo, and the head keeper of carnivores, Alan Woodward, has come to check up on a pair of VIPs, very important pandas, named Polly and Lashui. Today, what I'll do is put some bamboo at the base of this tree, hoping that Polly, the male, will come down. But he's quite nervous about getting too close to the female at the moment. They're red pandas. They're no relation to the famous giant pandas, but they're from the same remote bamboo forests of China. Alan is keeping a close eye on them because five weeks ago, they produced two cubs. The babies are still in the den, under the watchful eye of their fiercely protective mother, Le Shui. Well, this morning the, the vets have arrived and we're going to check the, the red panda cubs. Um, so it's important to, to give them a, a look over to make sure everything's going OK. So today we're going to microchip them, sex them and possibly weigh them as well. And also check their hearts. Le Shui's last litter of cubs died. Alan wants to make sure the two new cubs have a better chance of survival. This is only her second litter. The first one she had, unfortunately, died at three months with a heart defect. So that's why it's important that we check these for, for the, make sure the hearts are working properly. The keepers have been able to monitor the baby's progress thanks to cameras in the den site. Number four, Alan. Number four. But this is the first time Alan has had the chance to handle them. Looking forward to doing it, but uh, a bit sort of nervous about it as well because it's, uh, it's a lot going on all at once. They have to be very quick as well, as I said, to, to make sure they get back to the mother as soon as possible. The team must work fast so they don't cause the mother and cubs too much distress. OK, James. We've got the top open. Oh, God, these are good size, aren't they? They're lovely. You can take some photos of them as well. Thank you. Resident vet James Chatterton starts by weighing them. Yeah, 4.67 robbed up. And the second one's 4.1. Both cubs are a healthy weight. That's the first time we've actually seen them in the flesh. We've seen them on the monitors, and I was quite surprised really how big they were. So looking on the television screen, it's, it's a bit deceiving, but it's, it's nice to see them in, in the flesh, so to speak. They're away from their mothers for a few minutes, so they're just sort of uh, making sure that she's still around and letting her know that they're, they're close to her anyway. The next step is to microchip the cubs so they can always be identified. Yep. Yep, perfect, that's working. That's good. That's... Then James listens to their hearts. Yes. Might be a bit difficult with you being so noisy. Good boy. OK, that's fine. Okay. Everything's good. normal. Now it's time to find out whether they're boys or girls. A little boy. Both youngsters are crying for their mother, and Alan is worried it could be stressing her. You're always worried, I mean, because the mother's fretting and, and because you've known them so long that you, you start fretting a bit. So it's an important job to do, but it's important that you get them back to the mother as soon as possible. OK. Looks like two little boys. Okay. James completes the medical checks so the cubs can return to mum. It's always nervous when you're handling little babies, you know, because uh, you never want anything to go wrong, but especially when they're, they're so young, you just want everything to go right first time, but that was, that was all fine. As you can see now, mother's back with the cubs and she's cleaned them, um, getting all the nasty smells of people off them. And uh, as I said before, everything's gone well, um, everything's gone really well. And she's settled back in with them and uh, she's given them a feed now, which is, which is good maternal behaviour. The cubs are healthy and growing well. Alan will continue to keep a close eye on them as he looks forward to seeing them emerge from the nest box in a few weeks' time. Chester Zoo is home to nearly 50 hungry Humboldt penguins. They're the responsibility of head keeper Andy Woolham. Humboldt penguins, uh, these actually come from the coast of South America rather than the Antarctic. Recognised as being one of the most endangered penguins there are now. Chester is doing its bit for the Humboldt. Ten new chicks have been born at the zoo this summer. 
So this is our nursery pool where this year's young penguins are currently housed. Uh, there are different age groups here, the eldest being about 24 weeks and the youngest being around about 12 to 14 weeks. The younger ones will have to feed by hand, but as you'll see, the older ones now are feeding for themselves and uh, soon hopefully be uh, patriated onto the, onto the main pool. But we find that when they, they fledge or they leave the nests that's on the main pool, uh, there's so many other penguins there that they find it really difficult to compete for fish. And we, from experience, uh, in previous years, we, we generally get a problem um, of them losing weight and losing condition. So we find it a lot better now to take them into the nursery pool. Uh, we teach them effectively to, to, fish, to hunt fish themselves. Uh, and once we're happy that they're doing that, we then repatriate them onto the main island with the, with the adult group. And they tend to kind of support each other when they go on there, and it's, it works really well. The youngsters have a lot to learn, but with Andy as their teacher, they'll soon develop the skills they'll need when they graduate to the main pool. The penguins' neighbours at Chester are four Californian sea lions. Fernandez is the male and the biggest of the group. Then there's Fergie, who at 21 is the oldest and was born at Chester. Fergie was called Fergie because she was named around the, the time the, the Duke and Duchess of York were getting married. So she's the, the namesake of the Duchess of York, really. And she seems to have had a few problems, as the same as what uh, the Duchess had. Rio is the third adult and is eight years old. The baby of the family is Rio's daughter, one-year-old Sophia. Alan, their head keeper, has got to know the individual sea lions well, which helps when the time comes to carry out health checks. This morning we're going to try and weigh all the, all the sea lions. Um, I say try because sometimes they don't always cooperate, um, so we'll, we'll weigh the ones we can today. It's quite important to, to keep a, a check on the weights of the sea lions to make sure they're not losing weight and to make sure they're not gaining too much weight. So this is just a general procedure just to make sure everything's going okay with their diets and everything else. Fergie is a bit, uh, used to be a bit on the plump side, um, but uh, now she's actually lost quite a bit of weight and she's looking quite, quite, quite lean. Fernandez. The plan is to weigh Fernandez first. Mm -hmm. Being male, Come Fernandez on. On. is the heaviest of the four and normally tips the scales at a hefty 30 stone, around 190 kilos. Fernandez up. Fernandez up. Come on. Alan tries to tempt him onto the weigh scales with fish. Up. Come on. Fernandez. Come on. But Fernandez is having none of up. it. Come on, good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Fernandez. Fernandez. Come on. Up. Come on. Fernandez. It's a battle of wits. Good boy. And there's only one winner. Come on. Come on. Up. Come on. Fernandez, come on, up. Fernandez, up. Good boy. It's all calm on Chester Zoo's Chimp Island. But specialist primate keeper Neil Ormrod is still counting the cost of a family squabble. About two or three weeks ago, there was a bit of a scrap. Uh, Boris got a little bite, um, well, a couple of little bites. He got his top of his ear ripped off a little bit, which is fine. But he also got a bite on his right thumb. Now, normally when chimps get injured, the wounds don't get infected at all. But what we think's happened here, it's healed up. It's got, got a bit of infection. It's healed up on the outside, so he's still got the infection inside. Uh, his thumb's swelled up quite a lot. Uh, and to treat this is on uh, oral antibiotic. So it's uh, human medicine, you know, amoxicillin. You'd have it for a general infections and stuff like that. And uh, 
He has 10 mils twice a day. Injuries occur in all chimp communities, with individuals regularly competing for dominance. Boris used to be the dominant male at Chester, but at 40 years of age, he's not the chimp he used to be. And he's a big baby when it comes to having it. Aren't you? It tastes lovely. You know, everybody wants mitmoxicillin. If they've got a bad cold, we'll give them Kelpo. Everybody loves Kelpo. That's it. <coughs> you can see it's still a bit small in there. Chimp's thumbs, they're pretty puny and pathetic. His fingers are about twice the length of mine, his thumbs are about half the size of mine. For climbing, they tend not to use the thumb as such, they just use the fingers. <laughs> Does. You can have a play with them sometimes as well. Can't we? Can't we? I've known Boris for what, <laughs> near enough 36 years now. He was bought in a pet shop in New York. He was approximately six months old when he was bought. And for three years he was kept as a pet in a flat. Fortunately, the uh, lady who had him realised that chimpanzees do not make good pets. She'd heard about Chester Zoo and uh, sent him over here. When I started, he was only a little lad. He was uh, mischievous, to say the least. One of his favourite tricks was swinging off the roof and drop kicking you on the back of the neck. Boris has got quite a few nicknames, but one of them's Norman, um, after Norman Bates in Psycho, because when he was a bit younger, he was a bit of a schizophrenic psychopath. One minute he's very friendly and playful, the next minute he's almost trying to kill you, so it's, uh, you've, got to, you've got to be on your toes with him, certainly. He's a big baby, really, but uh, a dangerous big baby. <laughs> you look at those teeth, you know, I know he can bite into a coconut with those. So you don't want to put your fingers in there, do you? After many years of working with Boris, Neil enjoys contact that would be unthinkable for anyone else. Usually when they're, uh, they show the teeth like that, it's uh, a threat. But with Boris, he is laughing like that. I think it's probably because of his humanised upbringing. That's it for tonight. You can have some more tomorrow. Right. Neil is confident that Boris will soon be fully recovered. Headkeeper of Rhinos, Chas McKenzie, and two of his team are on a tricky assignment. What we're going to try and hopefully do is weigh three rhinos. Uh, we do this like once a month just to monitor uh, the weight or weight losses, weight gains. One of them is not overly happy about standing on the scale, so we might not be able to get away of her. She might go straight through, but two of them work really well. Get them to put the four legs on the scales and then hold them still for a... But it only needs a couple of seconds, and then it'll, you'll, you get the read out. Right, we are ready to uh, see if we can get one in then, aren't we? First in is eight-year-old Sammy. He's easily tempted onto the scale with a treat of bread, the rhino equivalent of chocolate. Get up. Don't be greedy. Oi. Come on, you lazy thing, come on. Is he on? One, three, one, two. Adult black rhinos weigh between 1,000 and 1,500 kilos. That's between a ton and a ton and a half. Sam has reached his adult weight, so shouldn't put on much more. We've got another one wanting to come in. Come on. We need her weight, Chaz. We haven't had her for a bit. Come on. Next up? It's nine-year-old Manyara, come on. Come on. on target at 1,164 on. kilos. OK, that's a good girl, that's yep. a good girl. Hold it. As predicted, Kitani is uncooperative. <laughs> she's very clever, she'll just nudge a little bit, a little bit, and then she'll eat the bread and pack out again. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
She wants the bread, but no way is she getting on those scales. While Kitani backs off, Sammy and Manyara cause a jam looking for more treats. Come on, Come on. Come on. Enough's enough, you know, like you don't want to do it too long, so we just say that's enough today and we'll try again another day. Oh, sorry. She's always the worst one out of the, the three. Come on. Come on. Yay! Come on. You know, two out of three is not too bad, is it? It'd be nice to get the three out of the three, but uh, well, as I say, another day we'll, we'll have another bash at her, you know, just get the persevering with her. Male black rhinos are really usually quite laid back. As you, you notice there, you, he's quite happy to have a lot of fussing and stuff like that there. Females are not quite the same. Uh, Manyara is, is reasonably good, she, she's okay. Where Katani is just slightly off, especially if there's too many people. She doesn't like too many people about. There's a good girl. Like most ladies, Katani is determined not to reveal her weight. But she has no qualms about having her head examined to get an extra portion of bread. Back at the penguin pool, it's lunchtime for two youngsters. Magenta and Jet are waiting to be fed by keeper Claire Rafe and head keeper Andy Woolham. So Claire's going to catch one of the two younger penguins. Uh, these are about 12 weeks old. Um, they've just been moved into the nursery area and we'll be hand feeding these. At the moment, they've been reared by their parents and they don't really recognise us as a source of food. So we have to force feed, but it only takes them a couple of days to get the idea. That's it. We're not actually trying to do them any harm. Uh, we have to poke the fish quite a way down for them to swallow. They just spit it out. You can see that on the back of these birds, they still have their little bit of baby down, if you like. And that's, uh, that's coming away quite nicely. And underneath is the nice waterproof proper penguin feathers. And in a couple of days, this chap will be in the pool with the other youngsters. And will be feeding quite happily by himself. Hey, Junior. Working in a zoo, which is a strong focus on conservation, you come to work in the knowledge that you're making a difference. Um, and I think that's very important. So I think job satisfaction is a, is a really important part of day-to-day -day life. And you know, I certainly get mine working at uh, Chester Zoo. In a few days' time, Andy will have the satisfaction of seeing all this year's chicks join the adults in the main pool. Next door in the sea lion pool, Keeper Laura Kelly has drawn the short straw. Fernandez! Fernandez, come up! Fernandez! She's got the job of persuading Fernandez to come ashore Fernandez. so she can give him some eye drops. Good. Fernandez is a Californian sea lion and he's 10 years old and we were treating him with some eye drops because he's had an infection in his eyes. So we can get them out on the block and give them some eye drops because uh, we don't do any tricks with our sea lions, but they're all medical trained. So we do we get them out every single day. So when we have to do stuff like that, there's no stress involved because they're used to it. The eye infection is a type of conjunctivitis, a common ailment. <coughs> Working with sea lions is one of Laura's favourite jobs. I like sea lions a lot because they're really interesting to work with. They've all got their own personalities and we work quite close with them because we do the medical training. So they're, they're a lot of fun sea lions. Roll over. Today, Fernandez is on his best behaviour for Laura. He's really well trained, but he can be quite stubborn. But sometimes he'll lie down and roll over straight away. So you're like, no, and you make him lie down again and then you say stay, and then you say good, give him his fish, but he'll still stay there to be stubborn to prove a point and he won't get back up again. Sea lions are nice to work with, but you have to watch them because they can be unpredictable as well. With the medical check over, Fernandez returns to what he does best, showing off. with 
good on, Des. Um, we've got the eye drops in okay and those eyes are looking a lot better. So they should be cleaning up in a couple of days. Fernandez will be checked over again soon, if he feels like it. Next time, a lovesick elephant won't take no for an answer. Oh, Polly! She could get badly beaten up. And worse. And Chester welcomes a new baby. It's like these soap operas on TV, innit? You, you don't want to stop watching them. <laughs> <laughs>